Thank you all very much for joining in. Um, I'm trying to imagine all of your bright shining faces uh, uh, sitting in front of me or standing in front of me. Ordinarily I'd be standing, but you couldn't see me uh, fully if I, and I don't think you still can't see me fully if I were standing. Um, so welcome to people who are uh, regulars to my class and uh, to those who are just uh, getting a taste of it for the first time. Um, a few things I wanted to relay before we get started. Um, pretty much what not to expect. Uh, don't expect downward facing dog. I can count on one hand uh, the number of times I've taught that probably in the past three months. Um, uh, but if I do, if I do, it's usually uh, not the tr traditional version. It's uh, sort of a hybridized, something that I would consider a little more safe for the shoulders. But, you know, I do teach it sometimes. Um, and, oh, and don't expect too much of a flow style. I used to teach that way, but uh, depending on who you talk to, my whether my uh, style has evolved or devolved, um, you know, you can uh, decide for yourself. Listen to your body. You know, if something feels a little bit off, it probably is, because I'm not built like you, and you are not built like me. Um, and that's what makes the world go around. Um, so if you feel like you want to lie down for this entire hour, that's fine with me. I can't see if you're doing it anyway. Um, but if you want to do, as I like to say, a one hour handstand, well, it might be a little less than an hour at this point, then um, feel free. Uh, let's see, I usually play music in class, but just to avoid all uh, contingencies of copyright, I have elected not to do that. Um, I could uh, try singing for you, but um, that would uh, not be a pleasant experience for everyone. Um, and I think that's about it. So listen to your body uh, and we'll get going. So this is an all levels class, um, meaning it's sort of, and I call it on the schedule at the gym, uh, open yoga because it's kind of open to interpretation. Uh, this is not a pure style, you know, that you'll find in the uh, traditional yoga books. I've kind of you know, adulterated my practice with, <laughs> in a good way, I think, uh, with outside influences. So keep that in mind. Uh, and I think that's enough uh, explanation. Um, something I like to do, uh, one more thing, actually. Uh, one thing I like to do before class is to give you a fun fact of the day. Something you can add to your uh, bank of useless knowledge. Um, so nothing that will do you uh, any great, uh, uh, that will serve any great merit in the long run, but it could be a conversation starter for whoever you are quarantining with um, when you have dinner tonight. Usually I read this from my phone, but my phone is recording right now. So I have this um, written down. Oh, I also saw a joke today. Due to the quarantine, I'll only be telling inside jokes. Get it? That's from the language nerds. That's probably my most favorite thing on um, on social media. Anyway, your fun fact of the day, which comes from an article titled 100 Totally Useless Facts That Are Too Entertaining for Words. A cubic inch of human bone can bear the weight of five standard pickup trucks. Let me hold this at eye level so I can avoid texting neck. Uh, human bodies can sometimes feel vulnerable and fragile, but if you want to feel like a superhero, keep in mind the human bone is actually stronger than both steel and concrete. Bone is extraordinarily strong, ounce for ounce. Bone is stronger than steel, since a bar of steel of comparable size would weigh four or five times as much, biomedical engineer Cindy Beer told Live Science in 2010. Uh, a cubic inch of bone can, in principle, bear a load of 19,000 pounds. Whoa. Uh, or more, roughly the weight of five standard pickup trucks, making it about four times as strong as concrete. So I am by no means suggesting you go out and uh, lie down under four trucks, but that's up to you. Uh, anyway, the moral of that story, I think, is that you are literally stronger than you think you are. Um, so let's get going. Let's start. I'm also assuming this has been a very long intro. My apologies. Um, I'm assuming you have very little in terms of props right now. Um, I might use a yoga strap, um, but I might not. You know, I always like to I have props on standby. Uh, I don't always use them though, but uh, if you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a, a belt or a dog leash, something like that, uh, that you might have sitting around. Um, and for anybody who doesn't have one, you can 
go. I'll let you retrieve it for a moment and I'll just check out what everybody's saying. Oops, everybody's saying turn your camera vertical. Um, I don't think I can now because, um, uh, because it's already recording. Um, but um, I hope that's not too much of an issue. I guess we'll find out at 6.15. All right, so let's start, why don't we, uh, reclining. Um, in a constructive rest position, as it's called in the fitness space, you could uh, also call it the um, uh, sort of the pre-bridge pose, just before you start to go up into bridge pose. And rest one hand on your stomach the other hand on your rib cage. And begin to observe your breathing. So that's not to say that you need necessarily to, um, to deepen or to make more shallow your breathing. Just be a casual observer of your breath. however much of it your body needs right now. Give yourself permission to relax. So your suggested theme, uh, since and it's one I suggest a lot, actually, um, I allow myself to relax completely. Uh, this might be a time when we're all cooped up, got cabin fever, um, and need to remind ourselves that it's okay to relax. I allow myself to relax completely. Uh, and then sort of a, uh, uh, another theme, a co-theme, uh, is, um, is an anagrammatically uh, inspired uh, phrase that popped into my head yesterday uh, in light of the state of things right now. Um, and that was, but now that I brought it up, I can't think of it. Um, it'll come to me, keep breathing. in a moment. Oh, um, I choose to fare well, F-A-R-E, rather than fear well. There's a time when we can get a lot of fear just kind of imbued in our bodies, so do your best to not let that get a hold of you, right? I fare well rather than fear well. Okay, good. And then if you have the space right now, Usually I refer to this as the first thing in the morning stretch because it might be um, what you do when you just wake up in the morning, but we'll call it the first thing in the evening stretch. So try to reach back a little bit more through your right hand and a little bit more through your right foot. So you get a little bit more lateral extension on the right side. And then switch it so you feel just that little bit of that elastic recoil on the right side and then start to reach uh, so you get a little more ex uh, lateral extension on the left side reach a little more through the left hand and left foot good and well done so take the arms back down and then take your uh, knees toward your chest. Uh, I just call this upside down child's pose. And nothing too fancy here, but just begin to uh, circle your knees. So this is a, an easy way to start to try to extract tension uh, from your lower back. Because uh, Lord knows we're all good at holding tension there.
and then reverse it. And then just sort of a systematic um, trip up the body, going through all the primary uh, joints. Uh, and I'm staying near the ground right now so that I'm not uh, out of camera shot if I stand up. But I might stand, I'll probably stand at some point, although I have taught whole classes on the floor before. Um, but I imagine we all have the need to get up at some point with all the cooped up uh, environment we've been in, environments we've been in recently. So. Until then, we'll stay on the floor. Straighten your left leg, right knee remains, uh, uh, and then start to circle, circumduct your right ankle. And divert some of your attention to paying attention um, to how your breathing shifts just by having changed uh, your leg position. And then circle the other way. Okay, next, that was the ankle. Now we'll take it up to the knee. Hinge joint, can't really do too much circling with that. Um, so take your hands, just clasp them very lightly behind your knee. Uh, and then we'll start to, just for the sake of kind of warming up the knee and all the tissue that funnels into it, uh, try to straighten the leg or somewhat straighten it and then rebend it. Straighten, bend, straighten, bend. Now I'm doing this right now uh, with kind of a, a neutral foot, neither plantar flexed nor dorsiflexed. But then if I try to plantar flex, that's the pointed foot, um, I tend to feel a little more contraction in the calf. Maybe you do too, right? We all probably feel this wherever we're the tightest. Uh, and then you could try that also with dorsiflexion, you know, the way your foot is when you're walking. And I find, since this is kind of mimicking uh, a knee extension uh, machine, um, my knee, my quads can get fatigued. So I tend to use my thumbs uh, as massage tools um, to floss out um, some of that, uh, some of those contractile tendencies that are coming into play here. And you can take your thumbs onto uh, different parts of your thigh as you do this. Yeah. All right, so then we'll take it to the hip, coxal joints. And just for a variety now, try to interdigitate your digits the non-habitual way. And let's start to circle that hip. So it won't be your full range of motion in your hip joint because you're lying down. Um, but we can try that uh, shortly on uh, what would be all threes. It will become all fours. And let's go the other way. And that's it. So just as a kind of a test retest, uh, we haven't done this on the left side, obviously. So you feel the, the residual effect of having warmed up those, those three uh, joints uh, in your right leg. Um, and then see if that right side feels a little warmer than the left side. Right. Just get a sense of that. Uh, arms reach back, maybe you can actually reach a little bit more through your right arm, right? having uh, affected some stuff uh, north uh, along these uh, myofascial planes just by working what's down south. Okay, let's do that on the second side now. Uh, hands go around your left knee, and then we'll start to circle your left foot. I'm just gonna quickly check the comments, making sure you all can hear me. It's nobody saying, good. You all can hear me, I think? Yes, I hope I haven't been talking to air. Okay, so circling that left foot, And then check back in with your breathing. Um, you're actually, just by being in this position, um, bringing your, your hip flexors into a little bit more of their 
uh, unlengthened state, so one might theorize they're not pulling on the spine quite as much, so who knows? Maybe you can actually take a deeper breath right now. Uh, and let's circle the other way. Good. All right, so now shifting to the knee. And again, variety, spice of life. Uh, hands, if you can remember, uh, interlace the other way behind your uh, left thigh there or the distal end of your hamstrings, uh, and then start to straighten however much you can that uh, left knee, and then rebend it over and over again. And uh, the proximity of your thigh to your chest as you do this will also have an impact of just how much stretch you feel. So um, I think, so I mean, when you're pulling your left thigh closer to your chest, it's a little more uh, kind of reinforcing the, the closure of that left hip, so it'll force, in a, hopefully in a friendly way. Um, I'm not there feeling stuff uh, in your body for you, so you need to know when to back off. Um, but as you're pulling your leg towards you, you'll feel more hamstring stretch. Oh yeah, and then thumbs, always looking for a good, uh, I'm always looking for an excuse for a massage. You can be your own uh, masseur or masseuse, um, since we're all inside inside right now. Maybe somebody can come up with virtual um, massage therapy um, in times of being cooped up. And then we'll take it down to left hip. So these don't have to be gigantic circles, just enough to feel like you're, um, you're unburdening this area, you're uh, unstiffening things a little bit. And then let's go the other way. Good. All right, and then another test. Um, so one, one negative to not being in person uh, with you all right now. Um, I don't remember if I forgot something on one side, so um, if I do, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can just uh, pause it maybe if you watch the replay and then unpause it when we go back into it. Um, all right, next, uh, check again on how your hips are feeling, right? This is our recheck, right? Arms reach back, feet reach straight ahead. Um, this is an upside down handstand, by the way, so if you think you haven't done a handstand today, here you go. Allow myself to relax completely. So some of the stuff we do physically, maybe not so uh, relaxing, but you can maintain that, that relaxed attitude uh, in your brain. Uh, one benefit right now you might have to, to not being in class, you gotta look for the silver linings. You might have a little more space to work with. So let's try, and just for a variety, I'm gonna turn the other way. Uh, let's do just a little bit of uh, revolved abdominal uh, work. Jatara Parivartanasana. As always, there'll be a spelling test on the Sanskrit at 615. Um, arms go out to the sides. Take your knees uh, toward your chest, and then try to keep them together if you can. Uh, the more hip flexion you get, the more close the knees get toward the chest, the more stretch you'll feel in the lower back. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, just uh, don't worry about your breathing pattern, just breathe normally and focus on how it feels to rotate your seat. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I just said it was interrupted. Can you all still hear me? Uh, the joys of live streaming. You all can still hear me, right? Just give me a thumbs up or something. Hey, this is live. It's not, not going to be perfectly edited. Sorry. All right, so your knees are going from side to side. Try to keep your knees together and your ankles together. Not separated, 
you know? Not like that Offspring song, come out and play. You gotta keep them separated. You gotta keep them together this time. All right, squeeze the knees. So that song is playing on your Spotify playlist in your mind right now, or maybe in your living room. Hashtag copyright issues. Uh, and then take your knees over toward the other side, trying to maintain that vertical stacking of your knees and your ankles. And I'm aiming my knees uh, for my elbows to try to maintain um, that degree of uh, comfortable discomfort and not you know, defaulting into anything that would start to resemble spinal um, extension. So then, if things are feeling pretty good, Monday class, right? That's how I usually, Monday class is usually a little more uh, on the high up on the intensity side. Uh, you can start with the legs straight. Yeah, we'll start with them on the right side here. Both arms, right? Shoulder abduction, arms out to the sides. Try to lift your legs, maybe like 45 degrees. And then let them go down to, I don't know, 25? I don't know what this is. I got the first C of my life in a geometry class, so I'm sorry if I'm messing up the math. But take them down about halfway from where you just started, and then go back up. As always, you love it, you just don't know it yet. And then go all the way up. And then control the descent over to the left. Don't let the legs just flop, if you can avoid that. Unless you've been having your quarantini, and maybe they do flop. Hopefully not before this session, though. But you'll be more relaxed, at least. So your legs are on the floor, got your feet together, those inner foot lines touching. Squeeze them into each other so you feel uh, the inner thighs kind of active. And then try to take the legs up about 45 degrees. And then take them back down. Back up. Back down. One thing I neglected to mention at the start for anybody who's new to class, um, or for anybody who's not new and you, it's still helpful to have the reminder, um, you can modify a pose or an exercise by not doing it. <laughs> That's fine. I can't tell if you're not doing it anyway. So um, another thumbs up for um, silver linings in, in being quarantined. Whew. Last couple. Ooh, that's enough. All right, let's balance that out with a bridge pose. So for bridge, anytime you backbend, um, anytime you start to take yourself into spinal extension, you want to have very active glutes, but also very active uh, inner thighs. All right, so squeeze your feet toward each other um, as if they were actually going to meet in the middle of the mat, but don't do that. And make sure as you're doing that that your knees don't knock in. All right, that's something called a valgus knee. So you want to avoid that, you know, unless you want uh, some knee issues down the road. But, and I'm assuming you don't. So you squeeze your feet toward each other, then uh, create a posterior tilt to your pelvis, your tailbone. Here's a rudimentary demo of it. It's kind of scooping up or forward and then up. So do that, push your lower back to the floor, and then curl tailbone, L5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then some of your thoracic spine comes off the floor. Squeeze your glutes. It will make this kind of an active recovery um, from what you just did. So this will be about a minute as soon as I find my timer. Here we go. Okay, so a minute plus. I just started the minute timer. And again, I can't tell through the screen in my... Uh, psychic powers if you are not doing this. So it's up to you how much you want to get out of this. I'm not, I'm not trying to push you. I'm just encouraging you. Keep squeezing your glutes. Keep squeezing inner thighs. Try to take the hips even higher. And then again, what does it feel like to breathe when you presumably now have a little more of this uh, corseted, uh, cummerbunded, if that's a word, sensation happening in your torso, right? So abdominal bracing, it's kind of that feeling you get just before you cough. Last 10 seconds. Uh, 
Saved by the Bell on the watch here. All right, what's everybody saying? Everybody doing okay? I assume so. Okay. Next, so it only took, what, like half an hour to get off our backs. Uh, all fours now. I tend to be a whole bunch of warm up and just a little bit of posing. So, you know, we're not, not so good at, um, uh, we're good at injuring ourselves, maybe not so good at, uh, at recovering. It takes a little bit longer sometimes. Okay, um, all fours here, uh, rather than the traditional, excuse me, extension and flexion of your spine, I'm tasting my coffee, excuse me. Um, something um, I just usually refer to as the spinal jump rope. Um, so your back won't move like mine, but mine won't move like yours. And uh, there are probably zillions of practitioners of yoga and these kinds of movement uh, practices that can move much more fluidly than I can. But to give you some uh, archetype of what I mean, you move your spine around like a jump rope. And I do this just about every class. I just, it's one of my favorite uh, go-to full upper body uh, warm-up exercises. And you can see I'm also starting to move my head because you got the cervical spine, the neck, also part of the back, also part of the spine. And if that doesn't cause you to get dizzy, then um, and you move it too. So let's go the other way. Okay, good. Nicely done. Uh, come into a cross-legged seated position or, or something else um, that's better for you. Um, we'll do some basic uh, seated twisting here. Uh, right hand to left knee. I'm not mirror imaging because I don't know which way you're facing. Uh, right hand, you're facing the camera, obviously. But hopefully I don't mess up my rights and lefts right now. Right hand to left knee, left hand behind you. Inhale, your head's reaching toward the highest cloud in the sky, your hips reaching toward the deepest part of the core of the earth, and then you try to twist. Now start to explore an, an even deeper breath because um, as you create these spiral lines throughout your uh, respiratory tissues, then um, maybe that has some impact in your ability to perceive uh, your breathing muscles. Good. Come out of that. For a variety, again, you can uh, change the way your legs are crossed. Uh, left hand to right knee. Right hand behind you. Right. Inhale. Tall spine. Exhale. Try to maintain that tall spine as you twist towards your right. Good. All right, so then a uh, little more uh, neck specific now. Uh, sit on your right hand. And so just like that. And this will just make it so that you can um, help to depress that right shoulder just a bit more. So it's not tempted to shrug and you look like the, the Michael Jackson thriller video. Uh, your left hand uh, your, and your arm, by the way, is just gonna be kind of extra weight for uh, these uh, lateral neck uh, tissues. Scalenes, what they're referred to mostly. You also have some trapezius fibers. And then you just try to let the weight of your arm carry your head a little bit more toward your left shoulder. 
Now imagine also, um, I don't know, like a, like a game of Jenga, you know, where you take out the, the pieces from the bottom and try not to knock the whole thing over, or maybe just a, a tree sort of getting wind blown slightly. So try to move your spine slightly side to side and uh, depending on where you are in the midst of that, you might feel different degrees of stretch in your neck. Um, you can also turn your head a little bit more toward your left armpit, hand goes behind the head, and then try to, so you just change the angle of your neck and might feel it in different spots. I'm trying to get at the levator scapula a bit more here. That's it, let's switch sides. Uh, sitting on your left hand now. Right hand goes around to maybe just above uh, your left ear. It might be interacting with it a little bit. And then try to guide your head gently toward the right. And either stay still or wobble a little bit. And I can definitely feel that um, more at certain points, depending on where uh, where I'm positioned in space here. You know, you can, excuse me, kind of lean forward or lean backwards or even kind of move on a diagonal. You, you know, just explore, explore the space around you, explore your own body. Refine your proprioception. Yeah. Good. Okay. So next, uh, just briefly coming back into all fours, because I did promise soon to be all threes. Um, I did promise uh, more uh, hip circumduction, but a uh, full range this time because you didn't have the opportunity when you were on your back. So back on all fours. So unlike those, here, let me turn this way again for a variety. Can you all still hear me, I assume? Yes, okay, good. Um, anyway, I forgot what I was gonna say. But come on to all, oh yeah, I remember now. So unlike those that, there, that loopiness of the jump roping spine here, I want you to attempt to find that abdominal bracing. You know, just kind of, not so much that you can't breathe, but you know, just mimic <coughs> coughing a little bit. But cough six feet away from someone. Um, and then that, that quick contraction, that inward uh, driving of your uh, musculature uh, is, sort of your Cliff's Notes description of um, abdominal bracing. So hopefully you can feel that so that there's minimal motion in your spine uh, as you do this. And just to give a, a sense of building the pose from the ground up also, my left hand is trying to spiral counterclockwise to keep the shoulder externally rotated, uh, but isometrically, not, not a literal movement. Right hand counterclockwise. Wait, did I get that right? No, left hand counterclockwise, right hand clockwise, excuse me. Then feel that uh, abdominal bracing and then start to move before you're just kind of circling within the, the hip flexion realm, but you might have more, you do have more space to take it into hip extension. And this in itself can really start to feel uh, like an abdominal exercise, just because I'm trying like HC double hockey sticks to keep my spine, a little reference from that sitcom Cheers in the 80s, uh, I'm trying to keep my spine from moving that much. So let's go the other way. So it'll move a little bit. I'm sure I'm not the most perfect demo for this, um, but you're trying to not be really floppy and invertebratized. Yep, good. All right, so second side with that. Doesn't matter which way you go, as we'll go both directions. And again, you don't necessarily need to do a gazillion crunches. You could just make sure you're keeping your uh, abdominal musculature pretty well packed in. Um, and you, you should be able to feel kind of a good sweat building. I know I am. So let's go the other way.
the temptation is great when your legs going up to default into this um, hyperextension in your lower back. So you could even find that posterior tilt again and move it around after having reestablished that if you lost it. Uh, did I say change directions? If I did, my apologies. One more time. Good. All right. Everybody good? Doing all right? Hopefully so. Checking in on everyone. Um, so grab your strap. We'll use that now, or your belt, or your dog leash, uh, or a really long towel. Um, if you don't have it, then, well, I'll try to show a version where you um, won't need this. So this is something I call uh, the lunging gondolier. It's not a traditional yoga exercise. You won't find it in Iyengar's book or any of the other traditional things. Just one of those things that I made up one day. Um, Cause I get bored if I do the, the same routine every time. Um, whoops, I'm slightly out of headshot, but let's see, I'll move back. Let's see, how are we on time? Wow, time flies. Hopefully everybody's having fun now. And you can still hear me. Maybe I can see some of those thumbs up signs going up. So with your strap or your dog leash, take your left foot forward. We'll all be transported magically to Venice uh, as we do this. So I'm holding the strap maybe a little wider than shoulder width. Uh, but you can decide whether you want to take it closer or take it farther. So I'm lunging, left foot is forward, the right knee is down. Um, if your knee is very sensitive, you can fold your mat over, give yourself some extra padding. Yeah. Okay, then you hold your strap on an angle. Left hand's high, right hand's low. So this is trying to mimic the, the paddle of the gondolier. Right? And uh, as you do this, you are trying to constantly pull the strap in half. And then start to mimic, very dramatically, um, a gondolier going through the water. And I don't know if you've seen the recent footage that the um, uh, water uh, in Venice is surprisingly still, and you can actually, people have been reporting being able to see the bottom um, of the uh, bottom of the water and then see the fish. Right. So let's go the other way. Let me turn this way just in case. This is um, as clear as, as unclear water, clear as mud. Again, I'm constantly trying to pull the strap in half. Donalds, as always, are trying to draw in. Yep. Ooh, that's tough. All right, so quick little, it's not a resting pose, and I don't think so, but um, it'll give the, the quads of the back leg a little chance to rest. So a lizard pose here. Um, let me get... one minute timer going. So within this minute, you can be totally still. It's very uh, statue-like. Um, or, as I'm doing now, explore uh, the position a little bit. Uh, you know, like it's... Um, um, I don't know. My... My analogies are escaping me right now, but basically try to see what it feels like to micro move or, or move a whole lot, um, or just stay still. It's fine too. Mm. I'm sweating doing all this. Hopefully this is becoming a, 
nice little break from being cooped up inside. All right, so that was a minute. Let's um, let's get on the gondola and go the other way. Uh, right foot forward this time. Uh, the space between legs is, is kind of up to you. Um, this is you're pretty much going into like a split with the front leg bent, uh, or um, more bent than the last left left leg. Since you are lunging, fire up your left buttock. Right, your your left leg is doing um, is doing cobra or upward dog right now. Hold your strap. This time the right hand is high and the left hand low. Try to pull on the strap and start to move in sort of an elliptical way, but in mimic um, trying to go through a uh, paddling motion. Maybe O Solo Mio is on your Spotify playlist right now. I don't know. If so, turn it on, baby. And then go the other way. Oh, now try to pull three times harder than you started. Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, one minute timer on the second side. So lizard pose or um, upside down happy baby, half happy baby, another way to think about it. So stay up on your hands um, or come down on your forearms if that's feeling good. You can make this whatever you want. If it helps you to get a little more meditative to close your eyes, then do that. can change your hand positions and maybe even rotate a little bit. I didn't mention that on the first side because it just popped into my head here. Good. All right. So that's a minute. Next. Let's try bridge pose from another perspective, um, more familiarly uh, known as camel. Uh, you might not be able to see me doing this, so I'll try to move back, but just think of bridge pose has been kicked forward um, 90 degrees, I guess. Hello, way over here from the other end of the room. Um, so up on your knees, pad them if you need to. Squeeze glutes. You can even squeeze your knees toward each other a bit. Option one, just stay upright here. Maybe that's enough for you. Option two, thumb and index finger area goes right at the top of your uh, hip bones. Uh, and you can start to hinge uh, backwards from there. Or potentially hands go down to the heels. Yep. And you're trying to keep your hips over your knees. So this is the totally opposite position of um, Netflix and chill. I don't think you sit on your sofa like this while you're uh, watching the latest series. So undoing all that. You can technically create a little more uh, contraction in the back of the body if, if you have a decent hold on your heels, trying to pull your heels um, towards your head, but isometrically. So your feet are actually trying to push back down as you do that. And if that doesn't make any sense, forget it. Ooh, man, child's pose, how about that? Listen to my body and respond compassionately. Okay. Good. 
just looking at the timing here. Uh, let's do just a basic standing forward fold real quick. Just to say we did do at least a couple of things standing today. And I will stand back here so I'm not completely cut off by the camera. Parallel feet. Um, knees a little bit bent. If your hamstrings are still a little bit on the tight side. Hinge forward and fold over your legs. So can your neck relax anymore? You made all those great efforts a little earlier um, to, to relax the neck. Relax your jaw, unclench your teeth. Slowly bring your way up into a standing position. And then we'll come back to the floor for a handful more things before we try to sprawl out into Shavasana. Um, so this is something, uh, this is a variation of something called a heron pose, Kraunchasana in Sanskrit. Um, let's actually try this a couple of ways. Traditionally, it's done with one leg bent like this and the other leg coming up in the air or you hold onto your foot like that. Um, if your knee is sensitive, as mine can be sometimes, depending on how much tennis I've played. Um, and you may not want to do that. Um, so you just do just a kind of regular, what would be a, a cross-legged position leg. And then take this leg, take your strap around it. Holding, holding onto the strap, excuse me, will also um, help you to try to sit up a little taller. So go on for that. And but bend your knee if you need to. If, that, if having a straightened leg is sacrificing your neutral spine, then bend it a little bit. That's fine. Yeah. Let's try that on the other side now. See, not too long there. So right leg is underneath you and left leg comes up. Bend your knee as needed as knee did. Good. All right. So then here's another version of that. Just, you know, assuming again, that we don't have uh, that many uh, props available other than a strap or a dog leash. Uh, why not use the mat? You can do that. So here's a variation of a heron pose. You grab the end of the mat that's closest to your feet. You bend the left leg uh, underneath the mat. And then the right foot, it takes a little bit of fussing to try to get it in the right spot. Um, but the benefit of this is that the mat is rubber. It has a little bit of a, a bounce and, and um, elastic recoil, you know, not, not that much, but um, it might provide your muscles with a little more uh, feedback, so who knows. So I've got my foot kind of nestled into the mat here, the end of the mat. I'm holding on to it, kind of bunched it up. And, and you may have to scoot back a little bit, depending on how close to the end of the mat you were. And you try to pull, again, bend your knee if you need to, you try to pull the leg uh, towards your face, doesn't have to get there. Uh, and you're trying to stay upright. You're also trying to pull the mat, this part of the mat that you're holding, straight down to the floor That'll help to depress your scapula and get you a little more upright. More upright and less uptight in these times that are making us perhaps a little uptight. And that's it. So we can switch. Do a little break dancing spin so you can see it from the other side. Uh, right knee goes under the mat. Oops. 
caught myself slouching there. Hands are uh, wrapped around your mat there. And you can decide like how much, um, how much mat you want to roll up because then you'll be getting a different grip. You know, it's almost like um, holding onto a tennis racket or, or a thick towel. I'm scooting back a little bit to give, my, give myself a little more range of motion. I'm trying to drive my heel into the mat and push it straight up and then I can feel that resistance um, from the mat. Trying to pull your leg uh, down into the socket a little bit more. And that's it. Nicely done. All right, winding things down. You're back in this familiar position that we started in. See what it feels like. Constructive rest because you're resting, but constructive in that you are not totally tuning out, seeing how your body feels. It's a sort of a before and after sensation. Cross your left leg over your right leg. Take the knees over to the right. And then for a little extra potential for a chiropractic adjustment, if your body maybe is needing that, um, you push your right hand down into your left knee, your left knee up into your right hand. So compare this horizontal twist to your vertical twist earlier. Let's exit from that. Uncross legs, cross right over left. Knees drop gently to the left. Try to keep your hips stacked, you know, not stressing one side of the SI joint more than the other. Um, you can do this just very lazily, not, not have any interaction between your, your hand and your knee if you want. Um, or knee pushing up, hand pushing down. And finally, release. Shavasana, the ultimate pose of repose. <clears throat> so as an opportunity to kind of come back to where you started in terms of your uh, tactile uh, observations of breathing, you could take your hands uh, over your uh, rib cage and abdomen. And watch that rise and that fall of your abdomen and your ribs. only letting the body breathe as much as it needs to. Feel a sense of gratitude. A sense of just being able to get out of your headspace, get out of the stuff that's happening outside our doors right now for at least a little while. Exploring inner space. I think of a term coined by a, a rolfer and body worker uh, named um, Gil Headley, who came up with the term somanat, 
someone who explores inner space. You can stay here a little longer if you'd like to. Just kind of tune me out if you're just having the time of your life. Otherwise, uh, pull your uh, knees up towards your chest. Roll yourself slowly onto one side. And you can sit up facing whichever way you'd like. And if you'd like to, take your palms together bow toward them, and as I always say, bowing in gratitude to your body for all the support it gives you, recognizing all the great stuff you did for your body this past hour, and bowing in gratitude to all of your blessings, past, present, and future. Thank you all very much. Well done. Namaste. Have a wonderful evening uh, or morning or afternoon, depending on whether you watch the replay. Um, don't worry, we'll get through this. You know, take your precautions, but don't let fear take a hold of you. We'll be good. Have a great evening. Thank you.